today we're going to be broadcasting uh, a webinar entitled uh, How to Become a Professional Film and Game Artist in 16 Months. We've got two amazing guests that are going to fill you in on this program. They are accomplished uh, local artists. Um, we're going to put a, a finite length on the webinar just so you know kind of when it ends. We're looking at roughly 90 minutes total, uh, probably an hour, an hour and 10 minutes of back and forth between the guys. Um, and then we'll be fielding questions from you uh, for another half an hour or so. Uh, we won't be able to answer all of your questions, but we'll get to as many as we can. Um, just for the record, my name is Scott Thompson. I'm one of the original founders of Think Tank with my partner, Joseph Bullock, who is also here. Um, potentially, you may be meeting Joseph a little bit later, but we'll have to see about that. Um, a couple of things, uh, we've got some giveaways. We've got some prizes that we're gonna give away. This is our uh, original shirt, T-shirt. So we're gonna give away a few of these. You can see the, the design on the back. This is the original, there's the back design in the front. Uh, we're not phasing these out, we're hanging on to these. Uh, they're gonna be around forever. This is our new design and you're very fortunate because you're the first people to see this design. Nobody's seen it yet, so we're releasing it as of today. So this is our new uh, shirt design. So we're gonna be giving some of those as way, away as well. In addition, I have these really cool all bamboo Think Tank hoodies that are brand new as well. And they're embroidered with the logo and the Think Tank name up here, which is cool. So we're gonna give away a couple of those. All right, so let's get this party started. I'm gonna bring in uh, my two guests. Um, my first guest uh, is an art director and a 3D art lead at Hellbent Games here in Vancouver. Nine years of VFX experience in games and film. Uh, he's a director for our Think Tank online program in the foundations term. He's also a Think Tank alumni, so he knows this school very, very well. Uh, he's not only attended here, he's taught here, uh, as well as, as I said, online. Uh, he hails from Israel and is now a permanent resident. So uh, welcome to the country. So. <laughs> Uh, Thanks, Adar. Guys. Thank you very much. Maybe you can grab that chair there sure. if you like. Uh, my next guest uh, is um, a fellow who has been with us for a long time as well. He works uh, at a company called Method Studios here in Vancouver. Uh, he is a texture artist. Uh, he's worked on lots of the blockbusters that you've seen uh, over the years. Um, he's also an alumni from uh, Think Tank and a supervisor for the advanced um, part of our curriculum for Think Tank Online. Um, he is also uh, a, a recent PR, so we're very excited to have, have him in the country, and hails from Brazil. So please welcome Paul Polino. Paul, hey, Scott. Good to have you. Thank you. Hey, how's it going, buddy? So I'm just hey, going to get out of the way here and let these cats take over. Uh, they uh, know the drill, so to speak, um, but this is going to be fairly loose, so we're not going to take ourselves too seriously here today. So if uh, you know, if we wander around a little bit, please expect that. That's kind of the way we roll around here. We're a pretty, pretty friendly, easygoing group of people. And, and I think we're going to kind of go down that road. I'll see you at the end. Uh, just so you know, the winners for the prizes will be selected uh, and announced at the end of the webinar. And as I said, we have a very important announcement to make at the end of the webinar as well. All right. It's a pleasure to be here. Wow. Hey, Larry. How's it going, man? Good. Good. Good, good. How are you? Looking good today. Huh? Thank you. Nice. Thank I like the mustache. It's Thank really... you. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry about the mustache. Uh, but uh, just a style in the you know, <laughs> 70s. Yeah. So sorry about, again about the delay. Uh, it's been it's our first webinar here, actually. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, hopefully more to come. So I guess this is at last in a nutshell. I like this setup. It's really cool. Uh, our objective today in general. Um, so we, we came here basically to share some of our own experience and insight on the industry as in general, how to, uh, how to get into the industry, what exactly you need to do. Maybe you, you're not sure if you, if you can get into the industry, um, what exactly to do in order to reach that. Maybe you are a student in a different location and you're not happy with your studies, or maybe you're, uh, maybe you're new uh, uh, to the industry in general, or maybe you're working in a different industry and you really feel like working on video games or film or stuff like that. So we can talk about our own experience, yeah. which is actually funny because me and Paul, uh, we studied together at the school yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and we just said before, uh, before this webinar that we met right here on the stairs right for the first yeah. time. 
and we've been known together. <laughs> we've known each other uh, for five years. Yeah, five years now. Yeah, 2014. Yeah, it's crazy, man. So it's a long time. Yeah. Uh, it's a long time. And it's nice because uh, so you you are in the game industry now. I'm in the VFX industry, so we can both give our perspectives. Uh, and it's, you know, like, and also being, I think, Dank Online, we can talk a little bit about like how we transfer a bit of our skills to our students and how we, you know, try to help them as much as we can, right? Exactly. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. So today we're going to be covering uh, a few things about the, uh, the Think Tank Online course, and then we're going to be covering like a bit of about, you know, the fundamentals and, and how important they are. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, there, are many, there are many things that, that we're going to cover today. Like, uh, like we're going to talk about the portal, the Think Tank portal, and then how we, we, we like to build the foundations, you know, for the students. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, you can choose to become a specialized artist. And that's very important. And then, and then in the end, we also have the mentorship, which is like one of the best things about Think Tank. When you have like a professional that comes and then this is going to teach you, like, uh, it's going to be a one on one mentorship, right? So that's a, it's a pretty cool thing about the school. Yeah, absolutely. Um, generally speaking, uh, I mean, just about our industry before we actually dive into all those things. Wow, that's a zoom in. Um, before we actually dive on all those things, um, is basically, just want to see this specific one. Yeah. So, so what does it mean to be in this industry, right? What does it mean to be um, a CG artist, whether you're um, a texture painter like Paul is, or a character artist uh, for video games like myself? Um, uh, generally speaking, you know, you, you get to work on pretty amazing projects. Uh, you, it can go all the way from working on commercials. Um, Obviously, everyone sees those, and some people love uh, that side of, of the industry, working on commercials. Uh, but it goes all the way to TV series and uh, and film and video games and uh, architecture and looking at exactly stuff, so yeah. many things, right? Visualization of all kinds, like yeah. it can be cars, even VR stuff, VR actually sculpting, um, like figurines, printing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, there's there are many many cool things about this industry, and that it's so versatile, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, and you get to work uh, maybe in your uh, favorite studios. Maybe you know some of those studios, like. Um, for instance, like Weta or ILM or Method Studios, Sony, Sony. Electronic Arts, Ubisoft, Microsoft. So uh, Think Tank has graduates and alumni everywhere. Uh, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So uh, people are studying and then they go to the different studios, either local studios or studios all around the world. And the, um, funniest, the funniest thing about Think Tank is that um, like I work at Method and there we have like many, many fellow friends from Think Tank. Every yeah. time someone new comes in from Think Tank, I'm like, I know you. Exactly. And then we just, and then we're going to talk about this later, but Think Tank for us was just like a, like a big family. Like we're here right now when, you know, we still hang out after all these years. Right. So, yeah. 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 Same, same, uh, in, in, in video games. Right. So, uh, method has a lot of uh, mm -hmm. graduates that you yeah. get to work with. And, uh, I worked at EA before electronic arts and there are tons of people from Think Tank over there, but mm -hmm. now I am working uh, as a 3D art lead at, uh, and an art director at, at Hellbent Games. And literally, I got to hire uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of think tank people as well, because uh, they are my friends. I can trust them, or students of mine that I know that uh, did an excellent job, obviously. So, uh, so the connection uh, portion of, of everything is, is very, I think, very important for yeah. our industry. Oh, yeah. In yeah. General. This industry is quite small, so it's important that we get to know these people so um what we'll be covering today right so, so who do we train i think thing at art like who do you would say like who, who would be a good idea to come to think thing like maybe someone that couldn't come to the physical school that's that's one thing right sometimes you can't physically move to vancouver because you know maybe family or you're busy yeah uh, or maybe so, you just don't want to you know it's it's yeah. pricey you need to move to a new location you need to pay rent yeah but you still want to study in in uh, a great cg school you still yeah. want to get all those skills right mm -hmm. there's also like those people that like maybe they already have some trait some sort of training but mm -hmm. they just want to improve 
Right, right. So I think it's also a good idea. Maybe you just, uh, I don't know, you just uh, study somewhere else and then you don't feel you're there yet. And then you, you want to polish this, this skill. So I think it would be a right. great opportunity, great uh, option. Generally speaking, I mean, the, um, I mean, it's not even about school. If you want to get in the industry in general, um, you, can, you can do that at any point, at any stage, right? You don't have to already have uh, some experience. I know a lot, of, a lot of people are actually thinking, well, you have to know how to do art or how to draw or stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. But if you are a beginner, uh, a complete beginner, um, or if you are in a completely different uh, career, uh, I know, for instance, right now we have, uh, we have a doctor uh, that is actually looking to completely transfer into art. And um, so a school like this um, pretty much uh, trains you from the ground up. You pretty much yeah. start from scratch. Exactly. Um, so if you, if you, you shouldn't be wor worried about that. Um, it is important that uh, this school, such a school, it is very, the curriculum is very hard and very intense. The school mm -hmm. is not necessarily catering for everyone. It is catering for everyone that is interested, but it also only caters for people that are, are ready to work. They're ready to work hard. 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 I mean, this is, this industry is not easy. It's very competitive, but as long as you work really hard and put your mind into it, uh, and in your soul into it and spend the time. It doesn't matter if it's an online school or if, or if it's a physical school, right? And it's funny because so when you came to Think Tank, the physical school, you had some sort of experience, right? Yeah. So you came from Israel and you worked before, but then when you came here, you, you start polishing your skills to, be, to become even better. Right? Exactly, exactly. And that's one of the points that is actually mentioned, yeah. right? It's also catering for professionals uh, that want to expand their knowledge. Mm -hmm. I came with... Uh, Primarily experience with uh, commercials yeah. and some TV series and stuff. Um, but I really wanted to work in video games. And I remember that your work was already impressive. When I saw that you were in first semester, I'm like, what, what is this guy doing? <laughs> and then you just, you know, and then, and then I could see the progression of your work. You got even better and then you focused on what you wanted. For me, it was the, pretty much the contrary. So I didn't know CG at all. I was working motion graphics for a bit. And I know that a lot of people from the chat probably had the same experience. Uh, some people were like, oh, but I don't know, work in motion graphics. I don't know if I can transfer right now. And there's also that thing about, um, am I too old for this? You oh, know? great. Yeah, that's a great and, point. Yeah. And it's funny because I just had a student, uh, Kirk. Uh, I love Kirk. He's, he's an amazing guy. And and, yeah. he, and he's a senior. And, and he's, his work is amazing. Like, he, the way he worked, he worked hard. And and then his, his final work was amazing. Um, so... Yeah, so it could it could also be a good idea for for those who who like want to change industries and 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 focus on something. Like I said, like for me, I came I used to focus on mo motion graphics in Brazil, and then when I came here, I started from the ground, you know, from the ground, and then I started learning all the skills, fundamentals, and then I became a texture painter in the end. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. So foundations and and it's just exactly what Paul was saying, uh, the building of foundations, right? Um, so if Paul had experience in a, in a different thing and, and he transferred to, to basically study CG, by the way, I don't, I don't know, some of you must have, uh, are following Paul as well. And, and you can see the, uh, you can see the difference between, uh, uh, you posted quite a bit of works than before and after, <laughs> yeah. uh, your experience yeah, uh, yeah. as a student and stuff like that. Um, so, so fundamentals, uh, in general, Right. Uh, so it's like building a pyramid. You have to kind of know everything. I feel you have to kind of know everything, uh, at least a bit of everything. Right. Because you can't just specialize in something specific without um, without knowing um, a bit of everything, basically. So uh, the cool thing about uh, foundations, for instance, and I also have it right here. Um, so you guys can see we, we split it into categories, but um, foundations basically teaches you um, how to model uh, the software, um, uh, the pipeline, um, everything, uh, just a bit the different programs, different skills with different tools mm -hmm. before you actually get to uh, to specialize. Do you have any input on, on fundamentals in general, why it's important? Yeah, I mean, and it's important that you, before you try like, 
greater things. You start doing like some crazy, amazing projects. You have to build the foundations, right? So it's important that we uh, develop that, and 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 that's why this is so important. And then you do, and then you have to learn the software, and then we're gonna learn the workflows and the pipeline and all that. So, yeah. All right. So if we're talking about software, right? So there's the 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 general skills uh, that you're learning foundations. By the way, soft skills as well, because you are interacting with a supervisor or in a group for a change, right? Because in yeah. a studio, we are working in, um, in, in groups mm -hmm. and we, it's really important to understand how to interact, right? Yes. Because you really know, first of all, don't be an asshole. Yeah. That's like the biggest thing that everyone's saying, right? Yeah. Um, it's really important that you're not only, uh, very skillful and very talented and, and do a great job, um, uh, um, technically, but also that you're a great person to interact with because yeah. that's, I think that's the, most important thing and that's the thing that you all constantly hear in the industry and it sounds easy right like oh just be a nice person yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you see uh and that's one of those things that we try to discuss in in, in our sessions i think then go online like during live sessions we try and talk about like uh, the best practices how to uh interact with your lead your supervisor and and then how to receive critique which is super important and a lot of people don't talk about it right just like oh how how do you take it how do you uh, respond to it. Uh, so I think that's quite important. Right. Um, so the basic things that you, that you need to cover, right? Uh, if you're going to a place like think tank or in general, things that you need to know before you get to the industry, because something, uh, some people, um, my parents, for instance, uh, would say, um, perhaps, you know, what you do is like, is like a uh, painting, right. Or drawing or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, before you get into this industry, before you actually get into this, uh, uh, in, into school, you don't necessarily know exactly what you're going to be covering. And it's actually a lot more technical and has a lot more aspects to it. Yeah. So just looking at the list. So Maya would be, uh, the basic core program that most of the things, uh, that are happening with it, uh, when, when it comes to layout and stuff like that, uh, Mari, uh, and substance painter. If you're want to become a texture painter nowadays, we have, uh, painter, which is great if you're working, first of all, if you're working in games, texture paint, uh, substance painter would be great because it's fast and it gives you like amazing results right away. Uh, Mari can be useful as well, but especially if you're working in film, you need to work on large assets. You need to work in assets that are heavy and have a lot, a lot of tile, UV tiles and all that. So Mari will be your, your go-to, but you still use painter as a, as a support, right? I usually make all my maps in, in Substance Painter and all that. So, um, I feel can... there's almost like a separation between video games and film nowadays for now. Uh, what do you mean? For Substance Painter is usually for video games and Mari is usually for I film. I think is it's it still merging, like nowadays in VFX, I'm using a lot. I'm using Substance almost every day. Right. And I use it as a support software. Uh, sometimes, I mean, if you're working on environments, and we need small props, I would definitely use Painter without even bothering using Mari. But if I'm working on Hero Asset, which has a lot of tiles, I just go straight to Mari. And then I use Substance as a way to support me with maps. Yeah. And even Designer, I'm learning Designer right now. Um, and it's pretty cool. So, I mean, in the end, software, and, and, and that's one of those things that everyone talks about. Like software is important, of course. It's important that, that you master the softwares, but in the end, it's all about how you use it. Right. Uh, and, and they're much easier to learn than other things like develop your eye and all those sort of things. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, so, and then we have Photoshop, which is also, it's a bit old school nowadays, but I still, quite so, but it's really important, right? We still need to edit those maps, right? Yeah. We have to resize things. And sometimes something that can take forever to do in Mario or substance, you can do in a second in Photoshop, like yeah. resize a map. Uh, and then you have Mudbox and ZBrush that you probably use more than I Yeah, use. right. Like any other foundation, uh, now uh, more than ever, we are using um, softwares, uh, programs to uh, digitally sculpt uh, details. If in the past you would use just Maya or 3ds Max or any oh, other man. program. Remember those days? I don't because it. Do <laughs> Damn, I feel so old. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, basically you used to model everything and that was that. That's whatever you did in Maya, that's what uh, what you used in the product, in the uh -huh. final product, whether it was a movie or a game or whatnot. But now thanks to different sculpting packages uh, like 
Mudbox in ZBrush, by the way, both are being uh, taught for different reasons, by the way. Um, but both are being uh, extremely useful now in the industry because you can get all that super high fidelity and all those little details and stuff like that because you want to get all that information, especially for close-ups. The more the technology advances, the more information you can see, right? Uh, and you get those crazy close-ups on like yeah. uh, movies that you worked on, uh, yeah. like uh, Black Panther and stuff like yeah. that, uh, that you can get those. Yeah, we yeah we recently worked on Godzilla too. It's coming out soon and yeah, it was... It's insane how close you can get and right. the amount of detail that you that you can get. Exactly. Uh, and then there's also Unreal. So uh, Unreal, uh, yeah, Unreal is it's it's the uh, the software basically to create video games, right? So it's it includes everything in it, like mm -hmm. Maya, but it's like the parallel for video games. Uh, Unreal Engine, um, just like Maya, provides tons of tools, but it also provides uh, an outlet to actually the game content creation, but it has so many art tools nowadays as well. Mm -hmm. So basically uh, you can get really crazy high fidelity in Unreal nowadays as well. You can get really impressive mm -hmm. results. And I don't know if you guys are following, it's a rhetorical question because I can't see the chat, but if you guys are following um, like different artists that are using uh, Marmoset Toolback on Unreal or generally speaking artists for video games, you can see how it gets really, really detailed and really interesting and really intricate in video games as well. So it almost like, it's almost like the, um, the quality or the fidelity kind of blurs out between film and video games. I think games it's, nowadays. yeah, it's definitely merging nowadays. Like film and games are getting so close in yeah. terms of quality that in a couple of years, we're going to have some amazing things. I mean, there's a lot of movies made in, in uh, Unreal. In Unreal now, yeah. yeah so, it's, it's, it's getting there. Yeah, the future is coming. So um, uh, being the director of foundation at Think Tank, I'm also uh, instructing modeling and also covering uh, the, the foundation modeling uh, videos uh, and instruction in general. So you got to build everything from the ground up, right? You got to know how to build things in Maya. They have to be the most, from the most basic things, uh, organic things, all the way to hard surface stuff. And you have to, everything needs to hold in proper resolutions and in it really depends on the project of course and where the cameras are set up but you need to know how to model and it's not uh, it might sound simpler than it is actually I mean there's a lot to modeling you got to know things like topology control edges uh, some of you may know these terms some of you uh, may not but there's a lot of technical things to figure out and the more uh, um, an asset is complex, the more you need to know, basically. But you need to know how to approach that. Yes. Texturing, Paul. And then, yeah, but then we have texturing, look development. Um, so a lot of people uh, don't really understand what look development means. And to be honest, I, I'm kidding, I know. Uh, so basically, texturing, we're going to take the model uh, that, for example, our model or something, and then we're gonna take that that model, unwrap it, make you know, create the UVs for it, and then we're gonna start painting it. In the past, you had to paint the UVs in Photoshop, right? But nowadays we have right, like right. Painter and Mari, and then you can paint directly. But but for those who don't know what UVs are, for instance, so UVs, know. oh man, it's hard to say. So imagine a roadkill. Um, no okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine like imagine a cardboard box. Yeah. Right? So just. Yeah, so flatten, we need to flatten it out flatten, before you yeah. can texture and, and have a 2D image applied to it, right? Whoever works as a look developer, uh, look development artist, they will do texturing, grooming materials. Uh, mm. In my experience, when I worked uh, as a look development artist, it was separated. So you have a texture artist, a look developer artist who would take the textures and plug into materials and try to make it look real. Right, so if I'm texturing a skin, if I'm looked at my skin, I need textures to have the color and the properties of the skin. Mm. And then I'm going to add subsurface and then dial those maps so it looks good. Right. And it's it actually later on, we'll actually discuss some uh, about um, the generalist versus specialized. So I think some of the things that you mentioned are actually quite interesting in that yeah. regard because some people do all, some people do mm. some, like you're saying. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so there's the pipeline as well. What is what what is the pipeline, right? It's the entire workflow. It's, the it's how everything right. connects to everything, basically, yeah. right? So you have all those 
different disciplines, right? Mm -hmm. You, someone, if, if you have different people are working on a project, you have a person that is modeling and you have a person that is texturing, you have potentially a different person that parts. is, yeah. How do you connect those parts? Or, or if you're modeling it's and then you're point. sculpting, how do you, how does, how does sculpting go back to modeling and you present that in Maya, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. So a pipeline would be, uh, or work would be the workflow. It would be everything and how everything is being connected, yeah. right? Imagine um, a, fl a flow chart, right? Where they have like all the, so we start from production and then they have like all the stuff. So they have layout exactly. and then they go to modeling and then it goes to texturing and then shading, lighting. And then while this is happening, maybe you have other things on, on the side like effects. Usually that's what happened in, in film. Uh, so you have like this structure in assets where people develop characters, whatever environments, and then you have other people there doing their stuff <laughs> and effects, whatever. There's so many guys. Yeah, the thing is, there's, there's so, so many, many disciplines. Yeah, disciplines. Any changes between different studios, different projects, yes. uh, type of uh, type of studios, type of projects. Yeah, if the games. studio is small, it's going to be a, like a, the pipeline can be like filled with generalists, right? Then right. We're going to talk about it you're later. You're pointing at me when you say that. You're no, you're a journalist. journalist. You're no, right. I was just checking. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have also. Uh, scheduling, scheduling. Is yes, quite I important. think scheduling is is a huge thing that oh, yeah. that you're covering up primarily in foundations. Actually, um, you got to know. I mean, in studios, normally you have like um, coordinator. You have a coordinator or a producer, and they ask you, "Well, how long it will take?" Or they ask your lead, "How long do things take?" So you can't really um, screw around and just keep working, right? You just you can't just and, do it infinitely and that, polish things. That's actually pretty good. It's really good that we have a deadline. Right? Yes. Uh, and I do that even for my projects. I like to set a date. <laughs> I actually have a project that, I, that I've been working on for so long that I don't have a fi uh, deadline and I've been working on it forever. And every time I look at it, I'm like, oh, I want to change something and I never finish it. But when right. I have like uh, at work when they say, oh, we have to deliver this in two weeks, even though you don't like it because you're like, oh, a perfectionist, I like everything perfect. You still have to deliver it, right? So when you do it, you just feel relaxed and relieved and you're done. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I mean, it's so important. And yeah. foundations just like, um, or generally the school is it has its time limits, right? You gotta, you gotta make, create things in a timely manner. If you are creating like, amazing pieces like you're showing something that that it took you um i don't know months or a year to create right and you can't really um you can't really show that you can show that to a studio but what studios often want to know is how long did it take you right yeah. so if something looks incredible but it took you two years to create then it, it's not feasible, right? They'll, then, they'll be wondering like, why did it take you so long? Yeah. Like, or even worse, you'll join the studio and then they'll give you an asset and you 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 won't be even close to finishing it in time. Yes. Right? Yes. And that's like, I can say, I can tell that it's, this is one of the most important things being able to, del to be, to deliver things in time, time. Right. And, and, and sometimes this is even better than quality itself because quality can always, develop, right? You can always uh, polish your quality as you go and learn from your peers at, at work. But when you start, you have to find a balance there, right? Like having good quality in your work and being able to finish things fast. And, and that's why it's important for you to build those foundations. And another skill that we didn't talk about, but it's really important. Uh, it's, I think it's considered a soft skill, which is uh, troubleshooting. Troubleshooting is really important because, um, you're going to get, you're going to have so many problems, especially de dealing with pipelines. Uh, and then these problems will be solved with troubleshooting and, and troubleshooting, uh, often like when you, when you're building your fundamentals, you're going to come across so many problems and mistakes that later on, you're just going to be able to solve them in a click. Exactly. And it doesn't matter which, which uh, discipline you are at. If, even if you are specializing, right, if you are doing something very specific, being a bit more more well rounded, it kind of caters to those expectations in a sense of you can. Uh, <clears throat> there's, for instance, you are doing animation, and there's a problem with the rig, where a rig is like the mannequin of what exactly how do things actually uh, move with the character how it comes to life. Um, some an, some animators, uh, which are obviously fantastic uh, animators, um, but they might not know exactly what's wrong with the rig because they don't have that little experience or with modeling or stuff like that. 
everything that you learn, especially in this in this uh, industry, helps you with other other uh, uh, other roles. Yeah, uh, essentially, you would sure. Say. Yeah, um, and all the things that we just talked about, uh, I think, think we're gonna put it all together in, in the first uh, the foundation uh, exactly. course, and then they're gonna create a pretty cool final project. Right, right. Um, which I think, in hindsight, remembering my time, I think, think when I started, that's when I found my passion for texturing. So when I finished my my wasp project, um, like I said, I didn't have any experience in three D, and then throughout these steps of finishing that project, I remember when I was uh, in the modeling stage, I hated it. I'm like, I don't want to become a modeler. That's I, when I didn't like him. Yeah, I was like, no. Nah. So that's how you lose friends and win. <laughs> other friends um and then but when i started the texturing process and i looked at them like damn i love that and then i couldn't stop thinking about it i would go outside i would take pictures i would go back and use any of my textures and i'm like oh that's that's what i love to do and then that's why the final project for the foundations is super important for you as an artist because that that's going to push you and test your your push you your limits right like you're going to go through all these processes and then find like the, the specialty that you like the most. Uh, oh yeah, so this, these are UVs. We're showing UVs now. UVs. UVs. All right. Sorry. I'm going to run from UVs. So final project in general, it's, it's basically um, every term has a final project. Mm -hmm. um, so the, um, just in general, basically this is where you harness all your acquired skills, right? You learn so many different uh, disciplines and things. Now it is time to shine. It is time to create in one entire month a project that is quite unbelievable, actually, because uh, besides getting the guidance and support, students have come up with amazing final projects that uh, we can actually show uh, on posters and they get hired just those thanks to those uh, final projects. And they, they even get featured uh, in Autodesk and different websites uh, because the final projects, even within just the first four months uh, is, is, uh, is quite amazing. It's just four months and they get to learn so much. Uh, and again, this course is, is tough. I mean, there's a lot to do and it's important to understand that yeah. uh, this kind of school is there to, it has its purpose. You are going to become a CG artist, but that would only mean that it will happen only if you put the time and effort. Yeah. Uh, as, as, as we expect you yeah. to, right? It will give you all the tools that you need. Exactly. And all the support, but you have to put the time in. And, and that's one of those, I mean, it applies to everything in life, right? Like if you don't commit to it, but it, it's a problem when you commit to something, but they don't give you the resource. If you're paying like for a school or for education or for whatever, and they're not giving you enough resources, that's frustrating. And I think that's, that's a good thing that I felt about Think Tank when I came here. Uh, and coming from Brazil was insane, right? Like moving and all that. Uh, but I think the same thing applies to the online. Uh, I made all that investment. And then when I came here, I felt like I was, I was being given all the support that I needed. And then uh, I just had to put the time in, right? So it, it was on me. And, and of course, having like people that could help you, uh, not only physically, but, you know, in a school setting, uh, just pushing you and say, and, and the, the teachers and the school itself was pretty cool. So now we can talk a little bit about generalists versus specialized. Are artists. there like final projects for the first semester maybe that we can yeah, show? Yeah, we can show a few. Uh, uh, no. There's a couple here. Oh yeah. Okay. So just these. Uh, yeah, we have images. a few projects here. These are final projects. Yeah, these are actually use. some projects <clears throat> uh, based on concepts from the internet. Uh, these are fully CG and made by students from the foundation course uh, in the online school. So yes. everything basically that you see here is the online school. Nothing is from the physical school. Yeah. Which I thought was pretty cool. All right. So generally versus specialized. And uh, that's what we've been, you know, we began talking a little bit about it, but we, we were waiting for, for the time to come. So uh, being generalist, we're a specialized artist. What does that mean? So basically, um, it, it kind of <clears throat> it kind of correlates with with the with like the the intermediate term I think mm. where you kind of choose the path. But regards to think tank, we'll talk a bit about our own experience um, because me and Paul took very different paths 
in general. Um, in life. In life, yes. Um, so although you are learning uh, many different disciplines, right, in the foundations term, you're mm -hmm. learning many different skills and you're learning how to model, how to texture, how to uh, light, how to shade, how to sculpt, animate, yeah. how to animate potentially, uh, not in the only course, I think. Though. Oh, yeah, sorry. Not yet. Yeah, it's a, it's a separate thing. Uh, but besides those things, uh, so you, you kind of learn everything and then you get to kind of specialize, right? You get to, uh, you get to choose what you want to do and become a more focused artist. Mm -hmm. And I think most studios, especially the big ones, if we're talking about method studios, um, primarily I would say film, but in general, electronic arts as well, you would say, uh, you need to have a discipline. You need to be professional at something. You need to know what it is uh, mm -hmm. that you want to do because you want to show the highest level of skill. Because if you will, uh, if you're a jack of all trades, you're obviously a master of none in most cases. Mm -hmm. And if you are doing, again, just to explain that, if you're doing a bit of everything, you might not be extremely good at something. Yeah. However, the good thing about learning everything and why it's so important, at least in the beginning, is because you can come back to it and you can change yeah. and you can adapt. You can always learn again later You can on. also learn again. Yeah, and then the, the, the important thing is, when you build that foundation and you know a little bit of the other specialties, you're going to become a better troubleshooter in, in the future. So let's say if you're specializing in texturing, but then you notice a problem with a model, then you can go back and discuss look, with the modeler and say like, hey, uh, would you mind uh, fixing this for me? I think uh, maybe the normals are inverted or something like that. You can be, you're going to be more well-rounded and you'll be able to solve problems uh, without uh, without getting lost, yeah. right? And 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 then like, like more this, dependable, more yes, dependable. Yeah, so you can be more independent, and you don't, you won't need as much help, like you, to fix problems. Um, and 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 again, you have to respect the pipeline, right? You can't just try and do everything. You have to understand the yeah. uh, hierarchy. Hierarchy. Yeah. Hierarchy. Uh, but so, do you consider yourself? So when you came to Canada, you were a journalist, right? So you worked in commercials, so you knew pretty much. Yes. Everything, and then you decided to specialize? Right. Yeah, yeah. So my, my personal experience with studying here was that I came as a generalist because I was uh, I was doing a bit of everything. I was doing a bit of, of texturing, lighting. Uh, I was working on commercials and TV series, like I said before, and it was a much smaller studio, so you kind of needed to do multiple things. But I really wanted to become a, a character artist, right, for video games. I really wanted to do that. That was my, you know, work at Electronic Arts or, or you know, other big studios, mm -hmm. uh, local ones. That was my dream, right? Yeah. So I specialized in that. And after doing that for, for a bit, I actually came back uh, to kind of manage it as, a, as an art lead and as mm. an art director. And having known all those different things, especially studying them a lot more in depth, I think, uh -huh. at Think Tank, I was able to come back and, and kind of manage it because I knew what every step in the pipeline meant. Yeah. So although I had a specialty, I kind of did a full circle and got back to managing it. Yeah. While in your case, it was actually the opposite because you decided that you are very interested in really getting good at, at yeah. one discipline. Yeah, because I started, so at school, I, even though it's my, my reel was tailored towards texturing and look dev, I, I had a good understanding of the other specialties like modeling and lighting and, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. And and you can consider yourself a generalist if you know these specialties. You don't have to know every single <laughs> yeah, specialty. Because yeah, yeah. when we say sure. generalist, some people might think, oh, but should I know animation or should I know effects? Comp? You can. Good for you. But uh, usually good luck here, knowing everything. yeah, like usually depends on the studio. Like some studios, such as uh, ILM, they have generalists that they can do everything. Like goes from modeling to effects. But my experience as a journalist at Scanline, for example, I worked mainly with uh, modeling, look dev, lighting, um, and then like, and all this uh, uh, all this knowledge that I had to think think that I learned through all the course, uh, it helped me to start you know to start working in the industry. So I started as a journalist. I was doing um, a bit of everything there. And then after a year or so, I decided to 
special, specialized in texture and I, and I start asking them for texturing tasks right. to focus on, on it. And then, and then after that, I just kept doing texturing, texturing, texturing. But in the future, if I want to change, if I want to become a modeler, oh no, no. But if I want to, uh, nothing is you, but uh, <laughs> uh, I can, you know, study and 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 that's one thing. Like sometimes people think that after school they're going to stop; <laughs> they're never going to learn again. But no, I think it's actually important. That I you think keep, you have to. You, you have, have to, to constantly learn, that's... especially in this industry. Like you have to keep pushing, and right. that's why I think you should be a journalist in your heart, where you should be able to learn new skills as they come. And then we have so many softwares coming up, right? So you have to be able to learn them. And, right. Yes. And it's yeah, the tools are always updating and changing. Yeah, for sure. Um, so it's really important just to just to kind of sum it up in, in a sense of foundations in a way is becoming a generalist, kind of doing a frame that kind of includes everything, right? Before you get to select a path and specialize, right? Mm -hmm. um, one other thing I would like to touch up, uh, up upon is, is the differences between different studios in terms of specialized versus a generalist, right? Yes. So bigger studios, would, you would normally specialize in something smaller and more specific, like being being a texture artist or being a modeler. Mm -hmm. um, smaller studios, you usually get to wear a bit more, uh, a few more hats and do mm -hmm. a bit more. And it also changes between video games and film, right? Yes. yes. Uh, in film, you have a texture uh, painter like Paul. In video games, some some studios have that, right? But for instance, uh, my studio, in, in general, most studios, like a character artist like myself, would do the modeling, would do the texturing, would eventually, uh, eventually well, that's not a word, <laughs> uh, would eventually also do the, uh, the look development as well, kind of figure out how uh, the, the materials, before, yeah. the shaders, materials are shaders, uh, for those who don't know, the materials and shaders are, and uh, textures and everything kind of works together and how everything kind of looks together. Um, so if you would like you go for video games, you just got to keep in mind that you will probably be creating more. Like an environment artist would also do kind of everything, would be like yeah. modeling, texturing, look development, maybe not lighting, sometimes mm -hmm. lighting, it really depends. And some people like that. Like I, I've met artists uh, that worked at ILM and, and they worked as generalists and they're like, man, I love doing everything because I have the ownership of the shot pretty much. You know, like so he built the whole shot, the asset part, and even a bit of lighting comp there and then a comp artists just go in and put it all together but he can say i worked this is my shot right and as a texture artist usually you are responsible for assets so you're going to take assets and then call them uh oh, oh i worked on that asset or if you're starting your career you're probably going to texture small props so we might not not like that right oh i textured that blurred building <laughs> at the back of that, yeah. that happened to me on Independence Day. Where I worked so hard on these buildings, and then in the end, you can't see anything. So, yeah. So it's it depends on what you're looking for, and then that's why uh, uh, the final project would be a, a, a great example of uh, putting it all together and being a generalist. Right, right. So there's a final project, obviously, for every every term, yeah. essentially, right. So if there was a final project that was more of a generalist kind of thing, um, so if there's a final project final project, for instance, for the foundation term where you kind of do everything, there's also a final project for the intermediate, intermediate course. course. And that's where you actually kind of choose a path and become more specialized in something more specific. Like you yeah. want to become, um, uh, create assets for film or you yeah. want to do an environment for video games. Yeah. So you kind of get to use that term and finish off with, uh, with a final project that is dedicated to that, that is more specialized to that. And there's also the advanced term, which is also has a some sort of a pro, like a large project where you specialize even more. Yes. And then you and then you're ready for your mentorship. Right. Right. So what is the mentorship? I think they go. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> what is a mentorship? All right. So so basically um that's one of the most amazing things that I found personally. Yeah, um because funny. you get to uh, let's see. I think we have a bit more information here that I can elaborate on. Um, right. So just generally speaking, before we dive into the what exactly is mentorship in, uh, by category, if we're talking generally speaking, uh, 
mentorship is you get a mentor that would interact with you face to face and make sure that you do the best job that you can and create an amazing yeah. portfolio. Um, so let's elaborate a bit more about that. Um, yeah, so right. usually you're going to get yeah, pro professionals that work in the industry and, and then you can select your, your own mentor and usually they're going to have, uh, each mentor can have up to three students, uh, or like one to two is, uh, it's usually the case. And then it's pretty good when you have, a, a, like a, another student with you and a friend, so you can, you know, start pushing each other and then, uh, um, friendly competition yeah. there. Yeah. Some, these are some, uh, images from, from some of the, some mentors, of the mentors actually from the school. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, then, I'm yeah. oh, sorry. Go no, no, no. It's... Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So the, it's pretty much uh, like a professional that, that will help you and, and, and tailor your demo reel that's going to, you know, make you ready for the industry. Right. Much. Yeah. Um, so a bit about the mentorship, if we can, uh, go back a bit. So there's the, there's of course your mentor, who is your mentor? So that your mentor is, is, a. Uh, it's important to, to emphasize it's an industry professional with a lot of experience and, and, and projects under their belt. Right. Yeah. So essentially, why is this so important? Because you know, like a lot of schools, I think have teachers, but if you are getting, uh, an industry professional as your mentor that knows all the recent tools, uh, and all the, all the recent, uh, uh, uh skills and knows how to work in an actual production on actual recent projects, uh, it's extremely valuable, obviously. And the cool yeah. thing about that is that you get to choose your mentor, right? You get yeah. to choose who it is. You, we have, uh, if, if we're, if we'll move on from that, we'll just, we have a selection. The selection. Yeah. In the website, uh, in the portal, they have us, uh, an area where you can choose like from the available mentors, but you can also request another one if you'd like to. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's, it's, that's, one of the amazing, and I also like my experience at Think Tank, which is pretty similar. Uh, at the time, I had Justin Holt as my mentor, and at the time, he was like a huge inspiration for me as to become a texture painter. He was like one of the reasons why I wanted to become a texture pa painter in the first place. And it's funny because nowadays well, we work together, like after the course, because we kept the relationship as mentoree and 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 uh, mentor and mentoree and mentee. I think mentee? is that mentoree, no, no, no. mentoree. Yeah. It sounds like an animal, like yeah. an entity. No. <laughs> But it's Menti, okay. I don't know, it's student. <laughs> yeah, sure. So Justin was my, my mentor and and we kept this relationship as student and mentor and we actually worked together and now we're good friends. And he's actually the director of my course and I'm the supervisor. So that's the, the great thing about this relationship, right? Like, because it's not just like the guy goes in and, and help you a little bit and he moves on with his life. Usually. The school choose uh, professionals that create a relationship with their students, and and they try their best to help them to get into the industry later on. Well, it it really depends on a lot of things, but yeah, it it definitely happens all the time, which is pretty cool. I think. Yeah, because it's more, you know, you are selecting your mentor, and it can be one of the one of the. Uh, people that think tank is already working with and has experience with, mm -hmm. uh, or you can choose someone that is more external and you're like, I really, you know, this guy is amazing. And if he's and, available and right. if he's available and the school reaches out and he's okay with it, then that potentially could be your yeah. mentor. Um, but beyond that, it's like, you know, you're building a relationship with people and people, yeah. I'm often knowing your mentor and your mentor thinks you're a good artist or knowing your, uh, your fellow students that find jobs uh, and, and think you're a great guy or a girl or ha and have great uh, skills. And that actually yeah. happened not only with mentors at Think Tank, but also like if you're, if you're a teacher, because I, it's funny because I, I, I was, uh, I'm, a, I'm also a supervisor and, and, uh, and then in my course I had students where if I had an, an opportunity to hire them in the future, I would definitely do so because I know their, not only their work, but also like how they, they, they would behave in a professional environment and all that. So that's why it's important if we talk about it again, to not be an asshole. <laughs> and it all comes back to yeah, not being an asshole. Be, yeah. All right. So I believe we saw some, uh, mental works, but basically yeah, the think tank, uh, online website, or even the regular one, you can just see a bunch of mentors and instructors and pretty much see their credentials if you're interested. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so obviously, the different slides that you've seen, like you know, the, the most recent. Yes. And, and so this was course. the work that Min did for her when she was in my course. Yeah. The advanced yep. creation. Yeah. Min um, is actually here now. In yeah. She came to yeah. Vancouver. Uh, I actually haven't met her yet. I want to meet. Hey, Min. What's going? Uh, <laughs> she she did like the foundation course and intermediate and advanced online, and then she came all the way from Singapore. To think thing to continue her mentorship. Yeah, 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 and that's pretty awesome that you can do that. Yeah, which is something I think we forgot to mention because sometimes six. Oh, oh we had six. So six, students. six online students actually came to the school and to do a mentorship locally. So that's also an, an option. Yeah, we're gonna hear from three of them. We're gonna have a video uh, of their testimonials and showing their experience. So that's gonna be pretty cool. I haven't seen yet, so I'm actually excited. I'm to, super excited to, to see it. that. Yeah. yeah. Oh wait, uh, the weekly sessions, right? I mean, we have it, weekly it, sessions. We have, yeah. <laughs> well, in the mentorship, how are weekly session basically can being conducted? Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the the great thing about the weekly sessions that we have on Zoom uh, yeah. is that you can you can divide it the way you want, right? Like if you want to see your mentor once a week or divide into you know two sessions, like small smaller sessions a week. Yeah. Maybe maybe want to like just have a small input, work a little bit more, and then have another input by the end of yeah, the week. Yeah, you build you build that basically with your mentor, right? You yeah. kind of figure out what's the best way. It's very flexible, right? Like you can just flexible. choose whatever fits your schedule and whatever fits your mentor schedule. It's not it's not stiff. That's a great the greatest part about a mentorship is that the school says, like, they, of course, the school is going to give you support, but then the relationship is between you and your mentor. Right. So yeah, it's a very head heads on. Kind of. Yeah. So the the school let the mentor drive the student, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool, uh, and that's why you have to choose your mentor wisely because uh, he's going to be the the guy's going to you know put you in, into the right direction. Right. And, and that that's why we have a good selection of of mentors that did that in the past, so they know the drill. Right. Exactly. 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 Um, so portfolio stuff. Um, of course, you get a dedicated time to work on your portfolio. Uh, with your mentor, uh, the portfolio is going to be uh, supposed needs to be right, whether it's it's this school or other uh, whatever it is that you decide to do. Yeah. Um, it has to be industry ready, right? You can't just be showing um, a cool turntable of something, right? That yeah. that looks nice. So you need it to be industry ready. Me means that you need to show proper breakdowns. Right, the standards, right? So the, exactly, yeah. When when you send it to a studio, like for games, for, you can talk a bit more about it. But uh, you have to show the breakdowns, how the person baked the normals, or something like that. Uh, in film, usually they want to see the turntables with uh, the topology or with the textures that you use. Even UVs, right? Sometimes you break down and show uh, how you. No, that's not as common. Film, not it's not that common. Like okay. maybe in games, it's more. Like how you pack your EVs, it can be more important. Yeah, okay. But in film, they don't really care. All right. Like at least not in the, this process. Um, right. But it's really important. EVs are important. EVs are important. Yeah, uh, for film and for games as well. I'm sorry. Just important. <laughs> Just important. <laughs> Even though I hate doing it. You know. but I, I, I find it very therapeutical. I don't have a problem with it. Because you work in games. That's why I'm always... <laughs> when people say, like, I love making EVs. Because you work in games. Because if you're working in film, you're gonna. I hate think it that's too. true for everything about games, but whatever. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are amazing, you guys have fun. But... No, no, I'm joking. Yeah, um, yeah that, that's sort of uh, the uh, relationship between film and, and yeah, game, right? That's here. always the case, even yeah. though obviously it's a very it's yeah. Nice I feel like you guys have more fun because <laughs> <laughs> we're always cranky. No, I'm not. Yeah, and connections. We talked briefly about that, of course. Uh, so this is obviously a very rhetoric, rhetorical question. Uh, well, we're hoping you guys, are you guys having, liking? yeah, having fun and are all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So we can't see the chat, but John, can you tell us briefly how, how we're doing over there? Yeah, he, awesome. He very happy. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you for Thanks, keeping guys. up with us. All right. So what we covered so far, we talked a bit about fundamentals, how important they it is uh, generalists versus specialists and industry professionals as mentors. That's really important. And yeah, yeah I think that's all right. Yeah. All right. Let's move on.
All right, so Think Tank Online. So what does it basically include? So asset creation program. What is, uh, basically you are building uh, assets, right? What is an asset? Well, an asset is, is basically everything CG in a sense, right? It's an, it's an actual uh, tangible thing that contains multiple disciplines, right? If, mm -hmm. it's, if, it's a, it's, if it's a model of something, it's the model of it, the topology, it contains the UVs for it, Mm -hmm. It contains uh, Texture. the textures, it contains the materials, all those things together combine uh, an asset, pretty mm -hmm. much build an asset, right? So you are creating assets for the different um, projects, whether it's a movie, a frame, a game. Mm -hmm. So basically uh, the entire curriculum and school is, is built uh, around creating assets mm -hmm. and combining them into a scene, essentially. All right, so project-driven curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it means that every term, if you, if it's the foundations, if it's intermediate, if it's advanced, every term has its own uh, project that you are working on. You're not just creating stuff for the sake of creating stuff. You're learning how to create those things, and then you're actually applying those skills, and are act, and you are actually uh, creating something with all those skills. A final project that shows everything that is relevant to that term really because if yeah. it's foundation it's just uh, a bit about a bit of everything and you just create a final frame and if it's if it's something like uh if it's in the texturing course mm -hmm. uh then you are pretty much texturing an asset and you it's all about the texture creation yeah that would be the final project. so we receive a model which is uh it's pretty amazing we have a few amazing models that we can choose from and then you're just going to take that and i force them to do their VEs so they can suffer a little bit. Force. And yeah, that's force upon them. And they do their <clears> VEs and then they start texturing. And then in the end, we have a small look dev. Uh, and yeah, and, and again, it's pretty nice that, like I said before, it's just it's just a lot of work, man. Like even nowadays, when I look at them working, I'm like, oh God, thank God I'm not, <laughs> I'm not there. Because it's Well, you used intense. to, I don't know, I used to, you know, when I was in school, I had tons of fun doing it. Oh, yeah. And some of those things, you know, with time are not as, you know, I'm happy to do other things now. Mm -hmm. But it's so important to know those things. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. It's definitely, like, it's important that you get overwhelmed, I feel. Like, you're going to be, like, freaking out and then, like, oh, my God, I don't have time. But then that's that's the goal. So you feel overwhelmed now, like, during school. So later you can be more relaxed when you become professional. Right. So basically it, it builds... It builds your, you right it creates Resist, it, yeah uh, it makes you a professional in a sense because you're industry ready when you get out yes. which is extremely important to yeah. finding a job at least right yeah it's not just about being talented and creating something pretty it's about knowing the job before you even get to the job yeah and right? that's what i felt that when i see when i start working in the industry and i met P, uh I saw my fellow think tankers start working with me and I've heard feedback from all the people saying like, oh, that person's amazing. He, it's, you know, everything, every every task that I give that person, the person can finish in, in super quick and it looks amazing. I'm like, oh, that's because the think tank, they, they teach you how to, you know, go through the stages and make sure that it looks good and, and finish quickly. Right. right? Um, also, every term is director led. So what exactly does the director led mean? Director led means that you have a dedicated professional with, uh, uh, with, with experience and projects and some management skills, obviously, that is directing that specific term or that specific path. So uh, if I'm directing the, the foundation terms, that means that my job is to make sure that the foundation term is going smoothly and that uh, the students are happy. You guys are happy, right? And everyone's getting uh, what they need. They, they're being catered for. Yeah. And there are also supervisors uh, that basically teach um, that the entire curriculum. So supervisor would also be industry professionals. So if we're talking about uh, Rusty, who's a supervisor uh, in foundations, or or Jacob Kusholt or, or Meek. Uh, so th these are uh, different supervisors in the foundation term and they have experience working in different, uh, in different projects, either it's TV or film, 
uh, you know, they worked on Star Wars and they worked on all sorts of amazing projects. And they're the ones who do the, the live sessions with the students, right? Exactly. And they record weekly videos saying like, hey guys, how's it going? Um, is everything okay? And then they, you know, touch right. base with them. And there's the chats, right? They're, they're, um, they're always there to help out to make sure that everyone's doing okay. So basically the idea is to, to be cared for, uh, from every, every angle. Now, if we're looking also at, uh, yeah, there's also incredible support, mm -hmm. uh, generally speaking. Um, so, okay, so we're also doing testimonials afterwards, so you can, can, can see a bit about that soon. All right, so one last thing for, for what exactly Think Tank Online means. Of course, there's a bit more elaboration later on. Um, there's an incredible support system. We have Matt here at the school who's pretty much on top of every single support tickets and you get instant support and instant feedback with every request that you have and every question. And you have different social, um, I'm sure we're gonna talk about this later uh, in the slides, but basically you have the forums, you have the chats, uh, you can interact with your supervisor, with your fellow students, uh, with a think tank team that can help you uh, re like almost instantly from, yeah, if, from if thus have, far. Yeah. Uh, Need uh, you need uh, software or help with it? You yes, they were always going to be there, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, sixteen months of training. Right. So first term foundation. Uh, we kind of covered that with the with the different subjects that we that we talked about. But what does it actually contain on on uh, paper and actually in the in the system? Uh, so the foundation term is fourteen weeks. It includes all the all the core. Uh, skills that you need, to, uh, a bit of everything, basically. Um, it's 14 weeks and, and you get to do a final project in the last four weeks. Um, that is uh, quite amazing and pretty much includes everything uh, that you learn in the foundation. Term uh, two, there's the intermediate. You kind of uh, get to choose a path, but still learn a bit of everything. Uh, that is more things that are more dedicated uh, to that specific path. Advanced means focusing even more uh, becoming more specific with the different skills. It's almost like a pre-mentorship, right? When you, and you, then you define like what you want and then you, you do a, like a project for a few weeks. Yeah. And then when you get to your mentorship, you're ready. You're ready to, you know, focus on what you want and then be amazing for four months. So. Exactly. Um, and the mentorship, of course. Uh, key portal features, let's, I'm going to talk about them uh, pretty quickly because um, you have more information about that online and uh, I'm sure you, know, you can search for that information as well. So there's the video player. Uh, the video player in general kind of shows, uh, it, it's quite extensive. It, it allows you to, uh, of course, see all the videos of the courses. Everything is pre-recorded. You can always get back to it, but you can also uh, um, it kind of expands according to the screen. You have a transcript that you can actually get into uh, and click on different words in the transcript and it will jump to those areas in the video itself. So you ac actually can, um, <clears throat> so you can actually search for specific things that you he heard that you want to get back to. Uh, and it's, it's pretty cool. It's like live translation uh, or, or subtitles mm -hmm. of exactly what it is uh, that's going in those videos. Um, the videos also allow for quick annotations as well. You can, you can, if you want, you can see the shortcuts that, uh, the instructors are using, um, individual courses. So portal in general is pretty much compartmentalized into the different courses. It's not a series of videos that you just watch one after another. You can actually see different, uh, courses. You get into that course, you see the videos for that specific week that for that specific course, you have a few courses each week and you have. Uh, assignments for every course, either exercises or assignments. Uh, feedback, you, you get it. feedback videos. Yeah. Okay. Interject at any point. If, if, oh, you okay. Know, no, it's okay. Free. You can go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, uh, there's the feedback videos. Um, so the supervisors, your specific group supervisor, which, which contains up to, I believe, eight students, something yeah. like that. Uh, so it's only eight students in a class. Your, uh, supervisor basically creates feedback videos that are specific and dedicated to your assignment. So you see a video and, it ex and, and the supervisor explains uh, what you did better, what you did not so good, what needs to change, what needs to improve, or what is actually being uh, fantastic. Um, live sessions, of course, once a week you get a live session. 
So that means that that's an hour of Q and A and the supervisor pretty much helping in real time, face to face, uh, helps the class uh, with everything that they, they, they are wondering about with the assignments. Sometimes it's actually industry questions. Um, sometimes uh, the, the, the supervisor will just show great tools on how to do different things. So you pretty much get that full support. Uh, resources. So you get uh, the assignments and the files from us. You get um, different tools by Think Tank. Um, you get like different results that you can actually dissect and open and see how those things were made. Um, and of course, different files and different links to different things. So basically everything that you need to create the content. Um, so the chat and the forums are excellent ways to contact uh, your fellow students and supervisors or even uh, the directors. I get messages all the time as well as the director seeing how it has gone. Um, and I'm helping out in, uh, in, in real time, right? And uh, supervisors are also there yeah. all the time helping. And of course, students are helping each we other. We have an app now, like a phone app. Yeah, oh, you can open the chat in the phone as well, yeah. right? Right. That's cool. Yeah, so you can pretty much access yeah. it from You're anywhere. Be on your phone the whole time Sorry, Joe, I thought you were mentioning the time, time. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like speeding Sorry. up. Sorry, yeah. All right. Um, so that, that is in a nutshell, but you, there's a video that, that uh, in the website that actually shows everything about Portal. Which is, yeah, so that's, oh, there, yeah, that's what oh, it is. there we go. All right, so there's that, and you can see it in the website as well. Um, all right, well, let's, after this, yeah, after this. Is this something that you, you want to uh, show, or uh, we can just discuss? It's, it's a recap, we've already said it. All right, so 16 months of professional training, um, access to the think tank community through social media and portal. That's everything that we mentioned. Mentorship with the industry, with industry professionals and a competitive uh, portfolio that has industry standard. Uh, I'm Dina Salemo. Uh, I'm from Egypt. And I found think tank uh, when I was browsing for a school to attend uh, like a course for visual effects, 3D modeling specifically for films. And um, I've joined in February 2018, and right now I'm in my fourth term in mentorship in Vancouver. Uh, so the program was amazing. It <laughs> it had like uh, it was like a virtual school where there you meet students, you get uh, feedback from supervisors. Uh, everyone was ta talking uh, through a chat, and in the portal we had like uh, weekly courses. Uh, we had week weekly feedback, we had weekly sessions with supervisors and mentors, and um, it was very uh, professional training from people from the industry, and that's that what made the course, this course specifically, different than the other courses I would t normally take online. Hi, I'm Min, and um, I'm from Singapore. I chose Think Tank Online because um, I used to work um, in double negative, but I worked as a match move artist. So I decided that you know I wanted to do something that's more um, in relation to my interests. So I thought that you know I really like texturing, and I wanted to choose a course that could really help me and teach me um, in this area of visual effects. So that's why I chose Think Tank. Saw a lot of um, show reels by the students, and I was really impressed by what they can do. Hi, my name is Isu. I'm originally from China, but I've lived in Vancouver for more than 10 years, so I'm pretty much ingrained in the culture here. Um, originally, I wanted to become a concept artist, a 2D concept artist, and uh, it was very hard to get into the industry. And I've looked around, and it seemed like 3D is getting more and more integrated into 2D anyway, so I thought I might as well get that part fixed as well. Um, I was looking through all kinds of school in Vancouver. There, we have many selections here. Um, but the general theme that I get from everyone who's ever pitched a school to me was just like, you know, it wasn't, uh, it's not hard. You know, it's not as hard as they make it out to be. And it was, it's only going to take a year. And we have like this massive uh, employment uh, ratio. Our graduates get jobs within a couple months. It was like, it sounds super easy. But I came here and I talked to Scott, and the first thing Scott said was, uh, "If you're not ready, don't don't do this job. Like it's not it's not easy. It's gonna take time and work. And um, and you if you want a job, you have to be basically the best of the best. And 
that was, first of all, that was such a difference from what everyone else pitches. And it was pretty much, uh, pretty much matches what I already understand about the industry. So I thought, uh, this, this has got to be the school that I have to take a look. And I looked through online uh, student works. They're phenomenal. So I really wanted to get in. Um, but you know the school is like booked uh, to, 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 to forever. So um, that's when I started to look through the, uh, the online program as an option. And you know, I really didn't know what I was getting into because it was a fairly new program. But when I, once I started, um, everything was very, very intuitive online. The system was great. And um, yeah, and I, I went through the whole program with no problem. I thought I was going to. Uh, come here to school every once in a while just to catch up. And it turns out it was so busy online, <laughs> I didn't even have time. And there was no need. There was um, uh, all kinds of the, the help was right there. So yeah, I'm gl glad I made this choice. As you can see, I've parachuted in to the scene here. Um, I'm just going to announce a few winners, just uh, give away some swag. So we're going to start with uh, some t-shirts. Uh, we're going to give away, uh, uh, Dara's going to hold up, uh, this is one of our original designs. Uh, you can choose either one, uh, whether it's this design or the new design. It really doesn't make a difference to us. Um, we will be contacting you via your email, and then you can respond uh, with the size and, uh, and the design you're interested in. Uh, just for the for you gals, uh, we do have ladies' shirts. They're cut differently and have different materials, so they're not these uh, sort of square-fitting male shirts. So first two T-shirt winners are Lorena Ivanovic. Uh, email Lorena uh, I N. Uh, Ivanovich at gmail.com. Second is Francesco Baldini, francesco.baldini.91 at gmail.com. Our third t shirt winner is Angelica, uh, and it's Ange, R O E H R I G, at simpatico.ca. Uh, fourth is Valentina, V4 V A L Y A at gmail.com. And we are going to give away two hoodies. So for these hoodies, I got one down here, Dar. Uh, first hoodie is going up for Novika Vukobratovic, uh, V-N-O-V-I-C-A at yahoo.com. The second hoodie will go to Alan at reflex, uh, X-X-X-R-E-F-24 at gmail.com. And our, our grand uh, $500 tuition giveaway goes to Tomas Dabert uh, uh, at tomas.dabert at gmail.com. So those are our, our prize giveaways. Um, I think we're going to go Woo! to, um, yeah, but congratulations to all your winners. Then thank you for taking the time to tune in. Um, so we're going to go to some, some questions. Uh, I, I, we've been fielding some questions from you, and I'm going to sit in on the questions, but I'm going to defer to these cats. Uh, certainly, I was in the industry for a number of years as well. Uh, as my partner was, which is a lot to do with why the school is designed the way it is, because we sort of looked at what we were doing and thought, how can we best train for this? Um, and we, we both actually taught at other schools as well, and we had some experience from that, so that helped us to find a curriculum that was really working. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll answer any questions that these guys don't feel uh, uh, are sort of up their alley. But I think most of the, the stuff will probably be uh, directed to them in as much as most of what we talk about here is actually on our website. You can find a lot of information there. Don't forget about the 10% offer. Yes, well, we'll have an offer at the end. Uh, there's going to be uh, an announcement right at the end that we'll make uh, after the questions. We're going to do about 20 minutes of questions here. So uh, maybe Joe can can read the questions back to us or something, or you can just pass them over to us. Do you have anything there? No? Uh, we can go to, let's see here. Maybe we can get Carlos to pass us some questions over. Um, here we go. Um, Gabrielle Strada. Will be covered in the course even the basics of art in general, such as color theory, composition, and stuff like that? Great. I actually got those in front of me now, now uh, John. Great. So you guys want to take that one? Sure. Um, in foundations, there's some of that there's it's not very extensive because if you're talking about uh color theory and stuff like that that can be studied in a whole year on its own so there's some of that some basic things in order to get the assets uh into their desired state but if we're not getting too much into depth into I think it's into also asking things. about like art like in uh drawing and painting and i don't think no. oh things like that yeah. not really no no we're, we're actually we're focusing on 
translating existing concepts into CG because in most studios and in most companies, uh, you won't be conceptualizing yourself. You'll actually, there's, there's a concept artist that you will follow uh, and create your assets um, by those designs. Yeah. I, I think as well as some people say, oh, well, I can't draw, so I can't be an artist. Well, that's not true. Uh, in this industry, we, we deal a lot uh, with reference. So you're always working from reference. You're always giving the studios what they want. And so even if you have sort of modest drawing skills, you can still be a very accomplished CG artist. Uh, you're not disqualified by any means. It's so. funny because uh, when I came to Think Tank, my friend Christian, we were like working together the whole time and he's a great friend of mine, also a texture painter who works at Method Studios now in Montreal. He, when we started, I had some sort of uh, online training in, in drawing, painting, whatever. So I had that, 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 you know, that base and then he didn't have any. He didn't know how to draw. He didn't know how to paint, but his work was stellar. Like was like amazing when he finished the course. Like he, he didn't, you know, need those. I mean, I, I think it's very important for you to develop that as an artist, as a person. Like that's what I did, and I think if you can do that, like by reading books and there's a lot of resources online for free, even uh, you can do it as a base. And then when you get here, it's just gonna make you your work look even better, right? So. Great. Uh, we have a question here from Lola. Lola wants to know, um, is it better to be a specialist or a generalist? Ooh, I like being a specialist. <laughs> but it's uh, very subjective. It's subjective because like I said, in your heart, you should be a generalist, like a person that understands everything, but you should definitely choose one specialty. At least that's my view. I agree. I agree. I, I, I can also interject in that and, and say that it also really depends on the type of project and the type of studio that you are interested in or even job positions, right? Because it maybe your country uh, or a country that you're interested in living in, maybe it has smaller studios. So in general, this would make more sense. Or maybe yeah. the job openings are more for generalists and that's what you want to do. Yeah. Or maybe you want to work in video games. In video games, oftentimes you are more of a generalist. Or yeah. if you want to do film, you need to be more, you need to be more specialized in something. Or maybe you like something over the other. So it's very subjective. It depends a lot. Yeah. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but nowadays in the game industry for AAA games, they're expanding a bit more for general, for specialists, right? So now I think you have more positions for texture artists and for shader TDs that use designer and all that. I, I, I think in the past it was a bit more condensed and now they're spreading it out. Uh, is it, is I, that... I think it really depends on the studio at, at this point anyway. But I mean, I'm let's like, say Naughty Dog, you were talking about like bigger studios. I think, I I think, think... there are actually, there are a lot of generalists over there. I know that at EA, for mm -hmm. instance, for a character artist is a character artist. You do everything from start to finish. And mm -hmm. that's a 3000 people studio. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's still very subjective. Mm, I'm not sure. Maybe it's expanding. Maybe it's changing. But I, well, would before. You, would you say yeah. it's fair to say though, and I think I came across this in my career, that sometimes you will get asked to, to do something that might be outside your, exactly. your sort of specialization. It's really nice to be able to say, sure, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it makes you look good and it also makes you feel more secure in your job. Yeah. Uh, whereas if you have to say, sorry, I, I just don't know how to do that. That's, that's a tough answer to give. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing a bit of everything is extremely important. Like yeah. we said before, uh, but I do strongly, believe, uh, strongly agree with uh, Paul and having some uh, specialization. Have, yeah. Being able to say, but I'm really good at this is, I think, is an asset. And it doesn't really have to be one thing. You can yeah. be like really good at two things that are close. Like you can be really good at modeling texture yeah. or texture and look dev or, or even texture and layout. No, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but it doesn't really matter. You just, yeah. Learn your thing. Yeah, I totally agree. Be good at it. All right. Let's, uh, let's, uh, Luke has a good question. He says, uh, are there any tips on getting a, a mentor? Uh, are, there, are there specific places to ask, find them, et cetera? The answer is yes. So we've actually created a piece of software. It's right in Portal, and it's called our Mentor Selector. And we have upwards of 60 mentors in there now, and it's growing uh, every week. We're always adding them. We'd love to get several hundred. Uh, they're broken down by category. Uh, you can start interactions with them. There's a right on the, uh, in Portal. You can start the, the, the communication with them. And it's sort of a, I want you do you want me kind of a thing? And if, if you check, if you pick them and then they pick you, then it, it kind of gets cemented and then we get an automatically generated message that says this relationship is created. So uh, it's sort of like Tinder 
Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of a little, yeah. you know what? I hate to say it, but it's kind of like that. There's no swiping, but uh, it, it, it kind of works the same way. Um, and, the, and that said, you know, we're not against you saying to us, hey, I really want this guy or I really want that guy. And maybe they're not on our list. That's not against the rules per se. Um, we, we love it if you can uh, stick with the folks that we know because they're proven and we know that they know how to mentor really well. It can be tricky if you choose someone that doesn't know yeah. how to teach because sometimes the artist yeah. is really good and I've seen that so many times in the past. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. there are people that are like amazing artists and then when they're teaching, they're terrible. <laughs> and that's, it happens. I mean, it's teaching is it's a, it's a different it's skill. skill on its it's own. a skill on its own, yeah. All right, I have a question from Sharice here and she's asking, um, do you have any tips uh, for getting into the school as far as developing a portfolio if you're not uh, a great uh, drawing uh, artist, uh, if you're not familiar with the software, you know, uh, I just say just to res with respect to the drawing, I think I kind of addressed that it's it's not a key thing. I think artists make better CG artists, but it's not a, a deal breaker. But what about software? I mean, does it matter? I mean, the cool thing about foundation is that it's four months that not only um, we check if you are like if you have what it takes and if you're working hard and can move on to more specialized terms that are more uh, intense and more difficult, but it's also almost a test for yourself, right? Because you can check if, if this is the kind of thing that, that fits you, fits your lifestyle, if you're willing to invest and you're willing to try. Uh, my general belief is that if you're putting the time in it and if you are investing and are serious about it, then you will succeed no matter what. And we've seen artists that had no previous uh, proven skills, nothing at all, uh, but they worked really hard and they are often, uh, they are exceed uh, artists that had previous experience, but just didn't put uh, the time as much because they thought, well, you know, I'm talented, I have this, it's not going to be too yeah. difficult. It's the myth of like thinking that people are born with talent, like certain types of talent yes. or art and, and yeah. I think hard it's work, a, that's, that's really the key element. Really cool. Uh, Addy wants to know um, what are the actual chances of getting work and financing yourself after you finish the program? Um, these two guys are living proof uh, that you can can take a program, whether it's online and these fellows both trained here. But I think maybe you guys both being from foreign countries, you can and working now in this industry, you can maybe speak to that a little bit. Yeah, well, I, I personally uh, I would love to get your opinion on that as well. But I personally think that uh, the cool thing about this uh, about this profession is that you can work anywhere and work from anywhere. I mean, it really depends, of course. If you want to work in a studio, in a specific studio, if you live in a location, it really limits your options to that place's location. Yeah. But the cool thing about this profession that not many other professions have is that you can do remote work to studios all around the world. You can fly to different areas in the world, work for a while, especially uh, a lot of studios, especially in film, have shorter contracts so you get to a, to do something for a year or for six months and then yeah, you move on go, to a different location. Yeah, you can go, I don't know, work to Weta for exactly. 10 months and then go to London and work for ILM exactly. and then go to, yeah. and that's great. You just have, you know, you have the you've option, got to travel, yeah. you got to, you know, if you want to, right? Yeah. Uh, but I think it depends a lot. Like for us, um, I think it would depend a lot on the country as well. Like some countries they have uh, bureaucracies on the government and that, that there's nothing uh, a school can do about that, but there are many places in Europe that have options. Uh, and like I said, you can work as a freelancer. And nowadays with ArtStation, it's great because if your work stands out and you get pr you know promoted and published in other places, people can hire you on the spot. And then yeah. you get opportunities. I think just like you're saying with ArtStation, there's so many online platforms now that allow not only for art to be presented, but for employers to reach out. like. ArtStation, LinkedIn, now, yeah. LinkedIn uh, Facebook even, but yeah. Zerply, I, I haven't got an offer yeah, from Facebook. Yeah, anyway. it's, uh, <laughs> Zerply uh, is a new, it's not a, a new website, but it's like more like it's a pretty, yeah. employer, like kind of search interaction kind of thing. So it's really easy to, I wouldn't say easy, it really depends on, you know, your portfolio and experience, but. Yeah, I think it depends a lot on timing as well. Like, uh, the, like when you finish your reel and then how the industry is because it yeah. changes all the time right at this for film it's like it goes
a lot of people. So maybe you might be a lucky guy or girl to be in that. Vancouver is a great example. Yeah, that, Vancouver, actually. like they, they have times when they're hiring everyone. Sometimes they're not hiring this, that much. Yeah. Uh, but you can always move abroad and find different places. Cool. Great, guys. So a couple of just quick ones uh, that I can just speak to. Someone's asking if they, uh, sorry, it's Max. Max wants to know if he can still buy a hoodie or a T-shirt um, without winning one. And the answer to that is yes, I believe so. Uh, it, it won't be within a week or two because we don't have that, uh, set, uh, that page on our site. But we'd love to get to that. Um, if we can figure out a way to get these out on a little bit greater volumes, we will. We certainly get requests all the time. You know what, Max? Everybody that comes to the school, if they want a t-shirt, they just come and visit us. If you happen to be in Vancouver and you want to stop by, man, we'll give you a shirt. Uh, so don't worry about that. Might not be a hoodie. They're a little pricier. But if you wanted to uh, to have a hoodie, these things, we're, we're not trying to make money on this stuff. We're selling it just at our cost. So, yeah, I mean, just email me directly. You can you can all reach me directly at scott at tttc.ca if you want to ask those kinds of yeah, questions. Yeah, also the mouse pads, right? For, for yeah, we got some pretty cool mouse pads too. It's just a, <laughs> it's not this, it's not the um, the it's giving away. Cool. We're happy to give them away. It's just the shipping and finding you, you know? Yeah. So that sometimes can be a thing. Um, how important is a degree or a diploma in our industry to get a job? Uh, well, to be, uh, uh, as for now, not at all. It's your portfolio, like a, like 90% degree. People don't, like the industry, it's like the companies, I don't think they care. Uh, it might help for immigration purposes, right? right. Like uh, in my case, I have a degree in social communications in Brazil, but that only helped me with, you know, the, my PR recently, but yeah. not to get a job. Yeah. Uh, I think it's mostly your portfolio and your portfolio and speaks timing. for itself. Yeah. yeah. And I think that you'll agree with me that we all know people that have got a tremendous education in certain areas and they, they can't get a job. Yeah, yeah. They, well, especially they, in our field, yeah. which is funny enough, right? Yeah. You can study that in universities and stuff like that, and you get out with a degree, but really your portfolio is not that great, so Nothing you don't that get hired. a studio, yeah. exactly, because right? they, they, they want different stuff. Yeah, they want yeah. they want the hard stuff, right? They want yeah. they want the tough stuff. Show show me the money. Um, how many hours a week are, are needed for assignments? A lot. <laughs> I mean, if it's you're, a full time uh, thing. Yeah. yeah. And th this covers another question. Someone else said, sorry, that was Maria asking that. And, and someone, uh, I haven't got the name in front of me, asked, um, you know, can I keep my job? And I say to people generally, I don't think so. You know, you might be able to work part time, uh, keep a, a, a small time job, but we want, you need commitment and 30 to 50 hours a week, probably. It's, it's a really fun time. It's, it's hard work for sure, but super rewarding. I think people surprise themselves at how good they get. Uh, I think some of those testimonials might have spoken to that. Um, we got a, lots of students, and I'm sure Paul's seen it and Adar has seen it, that that really have no experience, and all of a sudden they're just producing incredible work. Yeah. Right? I can just interject slightly uh, and just say that from my experience, there are all, always students that uh, have other things in their life uh, while they're studying. We don't recommend that because it is a full-time thing, but I noticed personally that students that have some background in CG can sometimes do both and still get good results. But people that have no experience and they are both trying to study and also study in the university or also work at the same time, very difficult, very difficult. And sometimes people also have families and kids. And I think you just have to organize your life in a way where you can fit those hours. Yeah. And it's all about like managing your life for a period of time where you can focus on developing your skills yeah. and becoming a better artist. For sure. Oh, it's also important to say that, I mean, we are here for you, right? I mean, the supervisors are here for you and people are struggling for various reasons all the time. So we try to dedicate the time and we try to be there. But if you really don't have the time or don't have the will or don't, you know, it, it we, we just can't do that, right? So as long as you put in time or you try. And commitment. Yeah. yeah, we're there for you and, and we try as hard as you. We just, we'll give you what, you what you give us, right? But it really depends at the end of the day of how fast you learn, how much time you have on your hands, how much experience you have. And, and Portal generates a lot of metrics. So your supervisor will know how you're doing. They yeah. will see you if you're see, watching the videos. Yeah. They're seeing if you're attending the live sessions. They're, they're looking to see if you're asking for help through, through, through support tickets. If you're not doing those things, then they might reach out to you and say, hey, is everything okay? You know, that's the kind of school we are. We do ask people those questions. Are, is everything all right? We notice you're sort of slipping. And we can, 
we can offer you know extra help to people like that in certain cases. Um, okay, just moving on here. Diana is asking if I want to get a mentor and I'm not in the program. I finished a program at another school and I just want to be mentored to kind of get that last piece. Uh, can I get that through Think Tank Online? The answer is absolutely yes. Great question. You can get it. it's a super question for sure. And the the um, you know the uh, the mentorship program at the school here as well. And I, it's interesting because when Adar got to the school, I looked at his portfolio and I said, you should take mentorship because you don't really need the other part. But he was one of those guys that said, I want to experience the whole process. And he was, a, I would say, a guy that had a lot of experience coming in and sort of, I wouldn't say he coasted through, but I don't think he struggled too, too much. But that mentorship piece at the end, he was so ready for it when it came along because he was, you know, just very accomplished. In fact, I think he had a job offer before he even finished uh, that last semester, um, which didn't surprise any of us. So if you're one of those people that you've already got some training and you don't have a demo reel that really sort of speaks to the industry, mm -hmm. yes, we can help you with that. Um, we do it all the time. We've been doing it for years. So that's a great question, Diana. Fabulous. Um, someone's asking me, uh, it is uh, Simon, uh, I'd love to move to another country and work in a big studio. How does the relocation assist work? Do studios help with that kind of thing? Some studios do. Like uh, I've heard that if you go to WADA, for example, since it's, since it's in New Zealand, right, and they usually support you with uh, uh, with all the costs. You know, like moving in, they I think they pay for hotel like hotel for a few weeks. Also, a uh, few studios in Montreal they would support you. Uh, I think it depends a lot on your experience. Right? Yeah, because you have to be some sort of a mid-level senior artist. To yeah, they to have to really want to bring you and pay for that. Yeah, I think that as a junior level, maybe when you first graduate, it's more difficult. It, is it more happens. Difficult. Yeah. It's probably more difficult. Yeah, unless you're, I don't know. I, I think that would be hard to happen to a junior. But yeah. definitely if you're more experienced. Yeah. Uh, here's a, a the same question basically from both Ray and Yoav. And they're asking... Uh, Ray saying, how realistic it is, is it for someone who's over 30 years old to take this program? And you know, I was asking, how does the industry feel about people that are a little more mature? Uh, you know, I'm a mature guy. I didn't get into CG till I was 36. So I mean, I'm, a, I'm living proof that, that you can start later and still do fine. The campus here has people in their 60s and they're doing great. Yeah. Um, so there's no limit. I mean, like I, Kirk I, is a great example. Kirk's right? a great he, example. He was like he killed in my, in my, in my class. Right. We've got a fellow named Kirk Lawton and he's uh, he's a rock star for hard work. Yeah. And he's uh, worked in the industry at several studios, including DNEG and Sony and Zoic. And now he's, uh, he's changing directions and he's decided to move from compositing into texturing for film. Yeah. Yes. And he's doing great. Um, the other thing is I think that studios just want to know if you can do the job. Yeah. Can you do yeah. the job? If you can do the job, they don't care and if you're what, young, what, old, boy, girl. And what I notice with with uh, older people, well, not older, but like if you're if you're not that young anymore, is that you have more responsibilities. That's in your exactly life. yes. And that's how I felt. You take you take the job with more, more responsibility. Yeah. And you were able to organize your life better than like I, I remember myself when I was eighteen and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know anything. I was I wasn't organized. I didn't care that much. And then when you're a bit older, you're like, oh shit, <laughs> I have to pay for my bills, right? So you you, you commit yeah. more to it. Yeah, I think I think I totally agree. I think studios in general of value some age. I mean, they obviously get talented artists that are young uh, and ambitious and all that. But you know, I think that especially in the 30s, for, for the person that asked about that specific age, I think there's some um, more seniority and responsibility, generally speaking, for mm -hmm. a person in that age. And it feels, uh, they like the fact that it feels like that person is more responsible. That said, it doesn't mean that a 20 year old can't be. It really is subjective. But I find that for myself, even though I had previous experience coming to Canada, being in my 30s uh, and nailing what, my you, first jobs. Are you in your 30s? Really? You're getting old, dude. I thought you were like 24. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's just knock out a couple more here. Um, uh, can you access, Ken wants to know, or sorry, Con wants to know, can you access the online course lessons at all times and how do we handle the time zones? Um, we group you based on your location as best we can and we try and find times that are sort of um, amenable to everybody. In fact, we've developed a piece of software in Portal, where else, that actually automatically uh, uh, groups you and allows you to, to vote on when your sessions will be. So it's pretty cool. You sort of get a say in when your sessions might be. 
Now, having said that, we can't please everybody all the time. So some people might have slightly more inconvenient times, but we certainly work on that. And yes, uh, once you're in Portal, you have access to it 24 seven and you can go back and rewatch. And, and even if you're in second or third semester, you can go back and review all the first, second and third semester stuff. So it's always at your, at your disposal. Um, and we also have a lot of extra, uh, extra videos we supplement. So there might be little workshops that we did some anatomy stuff that people wanted to, they asked, reached out and said, can we get some anatomy workshops? So sure, we brought in a great guy that we know and he did some great anatomy workshops. We've got some new compositing workshops, lots of extras that we throw in there just to kind of make you just a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna just answer uh, or ask one more question of these cats and then we're gonna move on to wrap this up. Um, let's see. Uh, do we, uh, it's not the right one for these guys, but, um, well, I've got a fellow from Brazil. Uh, maybe you can take this one, Paul. Ooh. Gabriel's asking, uh, Gabriel. Paul. But not in Portuguese, okay? Oh, not, you can maybe talk a little bit in Portuguese to Gabriel. <laughs> um, but he talks about the visa. Uh, now, this is a very important question, and we don't mean to skirt around that question, but it can be very tricky. and these guys could probably uh, support my, my position, which is if you have a killer portfolio and a studio loves your work, they will fight for you. Uh, I think that's the best advice I can give people. Be great and it, it's, it gets easier. You know, If you're kind of on the bubble a little bit, it's easy for them to say no. So I think there are three things that we have we might consider when it comes to getting a visa in a country, not only Canada, but states, whatever. Um, it would come down to having a great portfolio, of course. Promoting your, your work online, that's very important and a lot of people don't consider that because uh, when I say promoting yourself, I don't mean spamming Facebook and, and, and every single group out there. It's just like being smart about where you promote your work, writing tutorials, writing content so people can see that you're, you know what you're doing. I've, I've, I've gotten a lot of uh, uh, good feedback from companies just by writing articles. I got offers in the past just by writing articles. So if you're a student and you're struggling in Brazil or in not, not another country, creating content, showing your workflow of your process can be extremely helpful. I've seen like many industry professionals using student tutorials as a guide at work. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. And also timing. Like we said, sometimes the students might be hiring a lot, other times not that much. And we had cases like now in Canada, it's a bit harder for students to get a job because bureaucracy and, and government and stuff. But we had, uh, I had one of my students that he started working at Method with this new rule, which is quite hard. They have to pay you a certain amount of, uh, uh, per month. And he got a job anyway, because his work was really good. So again, we have to be lucky timing and all that, but it all comes down to your work and how you promote it and how you put it out there and make sure that people see it. And you have a website, Paul, that has some of this stuff. You've done oh, some yeah. great articles. What's the website? Uh, it's uh, paulhpaulino.com. And you can also go to our station. There's a few tutorials there. Uh, artstation.com slash paulhpaulino. Great, yeah. Okay. And we've looked at that stuff and it's uh, it's great stuff. <coughs> um, I think we're gonna wrap up the questions there. I'm sorry for those of you that I, I, we didn't get your questions. We actually have. Uh, dozens and dozens more. You, um, can I just say that sure. you guys can send us messages as well. I mean, if you guys want to email us and you're having questions, um, my email address is adarbronstein at gmail.com. I'm sure it's written my name somewhere. Uh, feel free if you have any questions. Send them. Same thing for me. Yeah. yeah. Paul That's H. Great. Polino at yeah, gmail thanks, guys. Com. Yeah. Yeah, uh, just two things. Last thing, just want to say a little shout out to the guys at the Rookies. Uh, Alwyn and the guys down there, they do a, a great job. Uh, the Rookies is now open for submissions. And those of you that aren't familiar with the Rookies, this is sort of the premier uh, benchmark for great work uh, in training uh, around the world. So you're going to see people that are up and comers and there's some fabulous work. There's lots of think tank work on there, but lots of schools are represented. There's up, upwards of five or 600 schools. Um, if you've never been to that site, uh, it's, uh, I believe, just rookies.com, um, therookies.com, I think. Call, I think. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's, this is one of the awards we got a couple of years ago. Thanks, Alan and Andrew. But, um, yeah, so that's, that's a cool thing. Check that out. Um, I think that's it for us. I yeah. want to say thank you very much to Paul Polino. Thank, thank you, you, Paul, for taking the thank you, sir. time. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Are you okay? Just while it's on oh, there. Adar Brunstein, thank you so much for taking the time. You'll thank see you. these guys... Uh, 
uh, in the online program if you were to join us. Um, a couple of great charismatic dudes. If you're ever in Vancouver, please just come by and say hi to us. That would be amazing. Um, our door is always open. You don't need an appointment. Uh, and, and these cats are bouncing around too, so you never know. You could run yeah. into one of them if they're here that, that, that yeah. day. So. Don't forget, come a manatee. Right? <laughs> come manatee. a manatee. <laughs> All right, so we're going to bid you adieu. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, uh, we're we're, uh, we're going to do this again. Uh, I don't know how soon, but we will be doing it again in the near future. So uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Bye -bye. Thank you. Cheers.